the host of Hardball, Chris Matthews, joining me now. Chris, good evening. Good evening. Hi, Keith. How are you? A, a, an acceptance speech, I guess, for an award. Uh, I don't know if any of the rest of us think he actually got. Am I, am I wrong in feeling that the only thing that was missing tonight was another Mission Accomplished banner? Well, it was a scorecard that only he could design, and of course he did well on it. Uh, but uh, in the way that today every kid gets a trophy who participates. But um, I think there's a problem. And I'm not sure it's about intellectual ability. I think he has it. It's about preparation for the office of the presidency. There was a wonderful line in uh, Shakespeare in Henry V, I guess my favorite of those plays, in which the clergy uh, sort of mocked the young warrior king and said, where did we find this sudden scholar? Hmm. The scary thing about the last eight years is that George Bush, whatever you think of him, came to office pretty much tabula rasa in terms of philosophy. He didn't have much. He was a rich kid driving his father's car. He got to be president because of his father, let's face the same way he got into school and everything else, the same way he got his car, probably. <laughs> um, but with the scary thing about Bush is somewhere he came to meet people like Dick Cheney and Scooter Libby and Paul Wolfowitz and Fife and the rest of them. They had this ideology that he bought into, this ideology that somehow the United States in waging war and taking over country somehow was fighting for freedom. And somehow in doing so, we would encourage a moderation in the Arab world. Well, history would have taught him, and I know he just put down history by quoting Jefferson, which was unfair to Jefferson. <laughs> history would have told him that in the Arab world, it's the Arab street. It's the regular people out there by the vast population and numbers who oppose the state of Israel, who have always been radicalized. It's been the leaders that you could deal with, the potentates, the kings we set up over there, the British did, uh, the, the people that were put, propped up with oil wealth. We could deal with those people. But the minute the street had a hand in the politics over there, it was radical. Look what happened. Under him, Algeria had a chance at, uh, at radical politics. And look what we got there, a bit of, a taste of that. Hamas uh, elected on the West Bank. That did a great great deal for uh, peace making in the Middle East. The election of Ahmadinejad. The idea that somehow the mechanical nature of holding an election somehow moderates a country. Mm -hmm. He said it again in his speech tonight, that somehow elections and democracy and freedom lead to a moderation on the part of these people. Well, these people have a problem in the Middle East. They want to fight. They don't like Israel. They don't like the West. There's a real seething anger over there towards the West. We better start to figure it out instead of retreating to these notions that he's been carrying around with him ever since he met Dick Cheney and the neoconservatives. I go back to this. The scary thing about Bush is he picked up one, almost in the way that a hermit crab does, another identity in becoming president. He didn't have a book knowledge to come to the White House with having ignored and made fun of at college the pointy heads, he mm -hmm. called them, or the intellectuals, and made fun of the smart kids at school and hung around with the jocks, he decided he's going to start listening to the intellectuals. So he said, hi, this Paul Wolfowitz is such a smart guy. Let's go with this neoconservative idea. Let's go into Iraq. He listened to Dick Cheney, listened to the rest of them, and all of a sudden he became this new scholar of freedom. And he's going to spend the rest of his life selling this stuff. This stuff cost the lives of 100,000 Iraqis, it cost the lives of 4,000 U.S. service people, and we don't know what's coming around the corner in Iraq. The Brits took over that part of the world and turned it into a series of monarchies. We take it over and we supply it with our ideology. Well, we'll see if it lasts, because in the end, the Arabs are going to have their own culture, their own politics, and down the road, we're going to have to make peace with the elements we can find to make peace with. The idea that we have some brand new neoconservative ideology of freedom that's going to bring peace over in that part of the world is not true, and he's still selling it, and that's the tragedy of the last eight years. He's learned the wrong lessons, and he's out there selling them again tonight. To the very Keith. last. To the very to the last. last. Chris Matthews of Hardball. Thanks, Thank Chris. You. I'll see Thank you next you. week. Thank you.